Hey there, I'm Tim and welcome back to the Plitix Academy Introduction to Product Information Management course. In this lesson, we're looking at how to set up and work within your PIM so that it becomes your central source of truth for everyone on your team and all your product information. We'll start by reviewing some best practices to lay the foundation for an organized product database. And then we'll look at some of the features you and your team will be using daily, like viewing and filtering product information, creating lists, bulk editing products, and setting up new users. So let's get started. Setting up your product database. Before you import a single product into your brand new PIM, you want to make sure that you've created a strong data taxonomy first. Remember what we learned in lesson two, clearly define your product attributes and each attribute type. Decimal for price, drop down for color, and so on. Creating a single source of truth for your products means establishing clear and logical rules for your data so that you and your team can work faster and smarter. SKUs and assets. Once you've created the foundation for your data taxonomy, it's time to bring your products and your product assets into the database. With Plitix, we associate each product with a unique SKU or stock keeping unit and every asset to a unique URL. By associating every product and asset to a unique identifier, there's no redundancy of information or duplication of files. So you can forget multiple spreadsheets and multiple copies of the same file. Plus, you'll never have to second guess if the information you're looking at is up to date. With PIM, you have a master record for all your products and assets, your single source of truth. Users. Next, it's time to get your team involved. And that means making sure everyone has access to the database. Your marketing team will need to work on content. Your finance team will be editing prices, designers add images and artwork, sales will need quick access to your product catalog, your e-commerce team will create tailored content and connections to all the different sales channels, and your IT team will be syncing up the PIM with all the other tools and systems. Wow, that's a lot of different teams and users, and every company is different. A PIM platform should let you configure different permission levels so that some of your users have editing rights for selected content, while others only get to view it. And you definitely don't want everyone on your team to have permission to delete things. Trust us, that's a lesson you don't want to learn the hard way. Tailoring user permissions will make sure everyone has access to and will focus solely on the data that they're responsible for without stepping on anyone else's toes. You also want to establish a few admin level users who are responsible for setting up user permissions and maintain the integrity of your database and data taxonomy. Admin users may have the power to invite and delete users create attributes and categories, import products and assets, and assign other permissions to special PIM features. That way, all of the data that enters and leaves the PIM and everyone that has access to it has been reviewed and approved of first. The ability to invite users to your PIM and manage each user's role is key to maintaining a healthy single source of truth for your products. Customize your views. Now that everyone who needs it has access to the PIM, let's take a look at how different teams can work in the same system and all at the same time by creating custom views. If you think about it, once you've imported all your information and files into the PIM, you'll end up with a database that has thousands of products and potentially hundreds of attributes, which is just too much information to look at. Instead, users can create custom views to quickly load and edit the products and attributes they work with the most. Essentially, an interactive spreadsheet with products being the rows and the selected attributes the columns. For example, let's say I need to add the Spanish translations of my product title, description, size, and color. Instead of looking at all my attributes and products at once, I can create a custom view with only the attributes that I work with. We'll call it Tim Spanish Translation. I will save it so I can revisit it and continue working later. Customizable views are a great way for users and teams to focus only on the data they're working with. And the best part? How one user views the information in the PIM won't change what others see when they log into the platform. Filter and find. Working with a custom view will change the attributes or columns that you see but you still have hundreds or even thousands of rows of products. To get even more granular, you can apply filters to your view to narrow down the number of products or rows of data that you're working with. Let's look at an example. Say I take my entire product catalog, which is 350 products. Next, I apply a filter on the attribute price and only look at my products priced under $20. Great, we're down to 120 products. Now I want to apply another filter. I only want to see the products from the category apparel and accessories. And I'm known to just 42 products. Filtering your products is a core feature of Plitix PIM so that you can work quickly and efficiently on a subset of your products that match your specific criteria. Create lists. Once you've filtered on your database to only see the products that you want to work with, it may be time to save those filters so that you can come right back to the same group of products without having to start from scratch. With PIMs, you can do that by creating a list. And there's typically two types of lists. 
static and dynamic. In Plytics, we call them smart lists. But before jumping into the difference between the two, let's take a look at a few examples of when and why you'd want to create a list. Let's say you only set a small selection of your products on Shopify. You can create a list only containing those products. Or you work with a retailer that only sells products under $50 so you'll need another list for them. These are examples of lists for external use, but there's also many cases where you want to create a list for internal use. Maybe I need to quickly access the products that I finished my Spanish translation for, or even better, the ones that I still need to add my Spanish translation to. Essentially, my to-do list. Lists help you organize your products into segments for internal use and externally when you need to share specific products and product data. Again, there are two types of lists, dynamic and static. You'll probably be using dynamic or smart lists the most. These are lists based on filters, and as soon as the product matches that filter, it will automatically be added to the list. It also works the other way around. As soon as you edit the information and the product no longer matches the filter, it will be taken off the list. All of the examples we've talked about would need a dynamic list, so that we're sure to only send the products under $50 to our retailers or to only see the products that are still missing Spanish translations, so I can continue working on my to-do list. Static lists, on the other hand, are for selecting products at random. An example here would be a customer or retailer sending you a list of SKUs they'd like pricing information or other data on before placing an order. The products that appear on a static list only update if you do so manually, whereas with dynamic lists, Products appear and disappear if and when they match your filter criteria. When working with lists, it's a good idea to establish naming conventions so that you can easily find exactly what you need. Another important note, we've only talked about lists in relation to products. The same logic applies if you need to create static or dynamic lists for your assets, which will help finding and downloading groups of your photos and videos quick and easy. All right. We've covered how to quickly modify the columns of information you see by creating custom views with specific attributes. Then we've talked about adding filters and saving that to a list so you only see the products you need. Now you have fewer columns and fewer rows of data. Next, let's look at how these features work together to make editing your product information a breeze. Imagine your marketing team needs to quickly change the color of all the t-shirts that come in gray to light gray instead. Easy. Filter for the subcategory t-shirts under apparel and accessories. Add a filter that looks for the attribute color gray, select all, then add it to light gray, and you're already done. The easiest and quickest way to update information across multiple products is to edit them in bulk. And once you've edited your information in the PIM, it will push those changes to everywhere your product information is. And that's the beauty of a single source of truth. That's it then for this lesson. So it's time for a quick recap. We reviewed why it's important to have a strong and logical data taxonomy for your products, talked about inviting users to your PIM and modifying their permission. And finally, we've covered the different ways to view and filter your products so you can work faster and smarter, all from your single source of truth. And now it's time for your quiz. Good luck and see you in the next lesson on sharing product data.